Hi, I'm Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis, and this includes nerve conditions like pudendal neuralgia. However, I am also a person who injured her pudendal nerve almost a year and a half ago now. I was riding motorbikes on my honeymoon with my husband. If you want to learn more about my injury and how I got hurt, you can check out this video. But the reason that I I wanted to make the video that I'm making today is because I had a recent experience actually at the dentist that is making me question whether or not a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding surrounding nerve healing might be at the core of unnecessary treatments in Western medicine, in healthcare, at least here in the United States. So, I wanted to first share about the pipeline in pudendal neuralgia world that I think exists currently that's based off of a misunderstanding surrounding nerve healing and then compare it to my recent experience at the dentist in order to share where this hypothesis is coming from. And please, open discussion, comment anything that you think about this as well. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. So as I mentioned, I have been healing from my pudendal nerve injury for about a year and a half and during that time I feel I've learned a lot about nerve healing and what it constitutes. However, because I am a pelvic physical therapist, I was also very aware of how pudendal neuralgia is diagnosed and treated in healthcare. And so the current pathway for treatment for pudendal neuralgia in Western medicine goes like this. First, you get a diagnosis that you have a chronic pain condition, which is often touted as incurable by providers. So you get diagnosed with this incurable chronic pain condition at the three to six month mark, depending on who your provider is. Some providers will diagnose at three months, some providers will diagnose at six, but regardless, incurable chronic pain condition at the three to six month mark. That's incredibly interesting to me, that we would assume that if a nerve doesn't heal between three to six months, that it's incapable of healing, especially because I can't find any studies that support that claim specific to the pudendal nerve, which is a much longer nerve than the nerves that we do have studies on. And this is something that I will speak much more about when I create a series dedicated to pudendal neuralgia, but I can't back that claim with any data and my personal anecdotal experience would suggest otherwise. So we get this chronic pain <laughs> incurable diagnosis at the three to six month mark. And then the next line of defense is management. We're not aiming to treat this, we're aiming to manage it. And usually management consists of pharmaceutical options. It's going to be antidepressants, gabapentin, pre-gaba, or a combination of the three. And if you're familiar with my content, you might know that I take no issue with pharmaceuticals. I actually think pharmaceuticals can be life-giving, life-saving, and life-changing. I'm very pro-medicine. I just take issue with their over-prescription. I take issue with the lack of education that patients get sometimes when they are prescribed medications. I think that informed consent is really important and I don't think that all patients understand what they're consenting to when they get prescribed medications. And I also take issue with the way that they're prescribed. As a provider myself, I really put lifestyle and natural interventions before medical interventions or just any sort of invasive intervention, even though pharmaceuticals are of course the least invasive. I just, I think that there are a lot of examples of conditions that can be treated with lifestyle interventions that get instead substituted <laughs> for treatment with pharmaceuticals. So all of this to say I'm not against pharmaceuticals, but that's what happens. You get your three to six month incurable chronic disease diagnosis, and then you get your pharmaceuticals, which in Pudent neuralgia world are going to be the antidepressant, the gabapentin, the pregaba. Those things are geared towards pain management. It's going to be about creating distance between you and your pain experience, not about actually healing your nerve. Will those work? I think for some people, those pharmaceuticals can make a really big difference with pain management. However, for those who don't have that experience or who have some pain management but their pain doesn't go away entirely, the next option is going to be minimally invasive stuff. 
namely injections, right? We're gonna be offered steroid injections into the pudendal nerve, and then we're gonna be offered nerve blocks, which are usually comprised of lidocaine, which is just a numbing agent and maybe some other things. And so either way you look at that, whether it's a steroid injection or a numbing injection, when we zoom out, the first thing we have to realize is that that's gonna damage the nerve. It's a minor injury, but you have to insert a needle into the nerve and then inject that medication. So that's something to consider, I think. You have to weigh out as a provider and as a patient consenting to this, okay, I know that if the provider doesn't miss, which happens sometimes, you can't always find the right area, sometimes you just don't get the nerve, but if the provider does actually inject my nerve, I have to be able to weigh in my mind, that's an injury, a small one, to an already recovering nerve. Is that worth the outcome of what's getting injected into the nerve? And this isn't to say that steroids and lidocaine injections don't make a big difference. Pain management is incredibly important for mental and emotional health as well as physical health. So I'm not knocking injections. I'm just talking about the true reality that exists when you do get these injections. So that's what happens. You got your pharmaceuticals. They're not cutting it. The next thing is going to be steroid or lidocaine injections. Let's break that down just a little bit more. What is a steroid going to do? Well, it's going to decrease inflammation for sure, which could be helpful in the short term. But if we accept the hypothesis in general that maybe nerves take longer than other tissue to heal, what kind of valuable information are you going to get from a nerve if you're going to go back and see your provider in like two to four weeks? You got some decreased inflammation. Is that going to heal your nerve in two to four weeks? Maybe. I don't have any numbers, but I would guess that that's probably rare. And then lidocaine, that's not a treatment at all. That's management. That's pain management. Lidocaine is a numbing agent. If anyone has ever gotten a urinary tract infection, lidocaine is to pudendal neuralgia as peridium or azo is to a urinary tract infection, right? You numb your bladder, you pee out like a bright orange, bright yellow numbing agent. Nothing hurts anymore, but you still have an infection. You gotta treat the infection if you want to actually be cured. So you do your injections and maybe they do bring you some relief and maybe that relief is worthwhile and that's a way for you to manage and it's all good. But on the other side of that coin, maybe the efficacy of those injections decrease over time. That is something that can happen. Maybe they just stop working entirely maybe they're just not cutting it anymore. Then what's the next step? Surgery. And here's what I'll say about surgical interventions and pudendal neuralgia, and this is something, again, I will speak so much more about when I'm on the other side of my healing and I create this series, but mechanism of injury should play an incredibly big role in the decision to get surgery. Surgery would indicate that there is an anatomical change that needs to be corrected in order for your nerve to heal. How did I get hurt? I sat on a motorbike in the wrong position for too long. Do I have an anatomical change in my body? That means that I need to have it surgically corrected? Probably not. In my brain, someone who would be a much better candidate for surgery would be someone who had a different pelvic surgery, who woke up and then was having pudendal-esque symptoms post-surgery, maybe someone who experienced some sort of blunt force that could certainly change your anatomy. Maybe someone who's experiencing some pudendal symptoms after a more traumatic childbirth. Things like this would make me think, oh, potential anatomical changes. But someone like me, my anatomy has not changed. So I do not think I'm a good candidate for surgery. And I can guarantee you that if I went down the traditional Western path, surgery would have been offered to me when the antidepressants, pregaba, gabapentin, and the injections didn't do the trick. So that's how it goes. We get this incurable diagnosis at the three to six month mark. Then we get pharmaceuticals, then we get injections, then we get surgery. And I was aware of this pipeline before I started treating myself. I, I was aware of this pipeline before I got injured. It, it's something that I was aware of because of my history in pelvic PT. But I assumed that this came from a lack of understanding surrounding pudendal nerve healing specifically. But I had this recent experience at the dentist that's making me wonder if maybe Western medicine needs to further study and understand nerve healing so that understanding how nerves heal can better inform Western interventions. And I'll explain the parallel that I experienced here. So the short version of it is that I went to the dentist and I have some cavities. Usually I'm a really 
really active participant in my treatments, but I was exhausted by everything that I've been doing in order to heal my pelvis. So when my dentist told me that I had some cavities that needed to be filled, I was like, all right, let's just fill them. This is great. This is like a cakewalk for someone who's healing from something like what I've been healing from. I was asymptomatic walking in. I get an outpatient procedure. It takes me like a month to heal. I'm all better. Now the cavities are gone. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a walk in the park. Let's just knock these cavities out. So I got my cavities filled, I want to say maybe in like mid-May. So it's been, gosh, like a little more than two months since I got my cavities filled and I've been having symptoms. I've been having what I would call nerve symptoms just in one of my teeth, in a single tooth that got filled. Don't feel too bad for me. It's really not that bad, especially compared to everything that I experienced with my pudendal nerve. Just some temperature sensitivity, especially cold, and some inability to handle crunchier, harder foods. And in both of those examples, I know that it's nerve stuff because it's that like shooty, electric, space occupying stuff. It doesn't feel like other tissue does and anyone who's experienced nerve healing knows it. it's just different. So I have a hypothesis in my head going in to see my dentist again right away. I assume that the procedure went well, that he just aggravated my nerve. But it's important, any part of your health, I'd advocate for this, you make sure that, that you're correct. And so I went in, I got my x-rays, we had a chat. I was right. There was nothing alarming or sinister going going on. Nothing went wrong with the actual filling or anything like that. It just turns out, like I wish I had known this about myself. This is a silly aside about teeth. Your teeth have nerves in them. And if, if this is your tooth, I'll probably make a picture like over here to show you what I mean. But like, if this is your tooth, your nerves do this. And if you can imagine the outside of your tooth and where your nerves are, as you get older, the nerve endings that are closest to the border of your tooth recede. And apparently I'm 20 29. Apparently I have the nerves of a 19 year old. So my nerves are like much closer <laughs> to the borders of my teeth than someone my age. And that means that I would be a little more susceptible for a nerve injury. And so what happens? What am I offered? First, no talk of whether or not this is something that I can cure on my own. This is something that the dentist needs to cure. And I don't blame the dentist for this whatsoever. I just find it interesting right off the bat. Incurable, first parallel to the pudendal neuralgia world. Second parallel, what are my options? Let's walk through each pathway I can go down. Here's a prescription for steroids. Take these steroids for two weeks and then come back to me. Okay, my dentist and I have looked at my x-rays together. We both agree that I have have nerves that are much closer to the border of my tooth than for someone my age, that this is probably a nerve injury. Again, if we accept the fact that nerves take longer to heal than other parts of our tissue, what's me going on steroids for two weeks to arguably reduce inflammation, which I have other questions about. I don't feel any inflammation. I understand that neuroinflammation is a real thing, but you can't see that in an x-ray. <laughs> so anyway, let's say I go on these two weeks of steroids. Is that going to give you any real meaningful, valuable information about where I'm at in my healing? I don't think so, but let's just assume that I do that. I come back in two weeks and I'm still symptomatic is probably how that would go. My next option is to redo the filling. That's super interesting to me. If we both agree that this is a nerve injury, why would we take this filling out and put another filling in. Wouldn't that just be injuring an already injured and currently recovering nerve? If that procedure doesn't work, what's the next option? Well, the next option is to file my tooth down so that I don't hit it when I bite. Isn't that adding even more insult to injury? We're kind of like in the injection phase that parallels the pudendal neuralgia stuff. Does that mean that injections are inherently bad for nerve healing? No. These are really micro injuries in comparison to removing a cavity or filing your tooth down. But still, it, it's the same thing. You have to, in your mind, actually be informed and balance the risk reward ratio there. What's worthwhile? If I'm going to do this small injury to my pudendal nerve, is the outcome going to be worth it? If I'm going to do this medium sized injury to my dental nerve, is the outcome going to be worth it? If neither of those things work, what's the final option? A root canal, <laughs> a surgery. So I don't 
know, in both scenarios, in the pudendal neuralgia pipeline and in the dentistry pipeline from filling to root canal, I just feel as though a lot of these interventions would be different, could be different, if the providers were operating under the assumption that maybe nerves take a little bit longer to heal than other tissue. And maybe there's ways to support that nerve healing outside of pharmaceuticals, outside of injections and further injuring the nerve with filling redos and filing your tooth down or with surgery. I don't know. I personally, based off of how this nerve irritation feels and comparing it to my pudendal nerve, I would guess that this is gonna fix itself in six to nine months. I really think if I just avoid crunchy foods and when I do eat crunchy foods I chew on this side, if I just avoid really cold stuff, if I sleep <laughs> and that sort of thing, I, I think it's gonna heal itself and I'm gonna be a lot more weary of future fillings. <laughs> All of this to say I'm not angry at providers, I'm not angry at Western medicine. I just think that there's a potential for a real misunderstanding here for nerves, nerve healing, how long it takes, and what it feels like. This is a topic for a different video, but in general, nerve healing doesn't feel good. Nerve healing is painful. Have you ever been in a bad position for a while, your leg falls asleep, and then you move it, and your leg wakes back up? That's not a pleasant feeling. That is your nerve healing from a really, really minor ischemic injury, which is just a fancy way to say you slept on it wrong or sat on it wrong. It didn't get blood flow for a little while and now it's getting a lot of blood flow, right? Like, couldn't we put the hypothesis forward that maybe nerve healing is painful and maybe that pain could actually be a good thing? Anyway, I just, I wanted to create this video. I wanted to speak a little bit more about this hypothesis. I wanted to put it out there in case it's relevant to anyone watching. I really do think that nerve healing might take a little bit longer than we realize. A year and a half into my healing and I'm starting to run again. I'm starting to sit in a way that I would say is a little arrogant. Like I'm just sitting whenever I want in any position. I'm driving. I'm doing little 30 minute bouts of driving again. It's, it's happening. It's happening and I'm so excited. But anyway, that was on my mind. <laughs> I hope that wasn't too rambly. And again, please know that this is not me knocking pharmaceuticals, knocking injections, or knocking surgery. I really, 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 really think it depends on the person, depends on the mechanism of injury, depends on their current mental, emotional, and physical state. And I think that pretending that all nerve injuries are the same and not actually treating an individual, married to the total lack of understanding or misunderstanding of nerve healing might be the root issue here. And I just wanted to put that hypothesis out there on my channel for anyone who's interested. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Please feel free to comment absolutely anything down below. I do try really hard to read and respond to all of my comments. And I also just enjoy having conversations with you guys. I enjoy hearing more about your experiences and that sort of thing. So sincerely comment anything, your experiences, your thoughts, feedback, content suggestions, you name it. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram. And finally, if you want to see more content from me, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I, excuse me, make videos about pelvic things and I also make videos about life things like today's video. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.